Hello everybody, my name is Pipatch and welcome back to our life beginnings and always. Um, this is continuing on uh, the same recording from our uh, last episode. So we're just going to jump right into it, okay? You ready to go? This is going to be so much fun, okay? Oh my gosh, look at my room. Sorry, I just want to take it all in for a second. It was the first day of summer vacation. The sun was as hot as ever, but you were inside and away from its harsh rays. To be more specific, you were. So I got up in your bed, so. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm a, I like to get up early and be productive when I can. You made sure to slather on a generous amount of sunscreen so you didn't get burnt. You were looking in the mirror, studying the clothes you'd thrown on when your bedroom door opened without warning. In the reflection, you saw Elizabeth raise an eyebrow. Oh my gosh! <laughs> You're all grown up! Oh my heart! Have you been staring at yourself this whole morning? <laughs> I'm gonna have to change all these voices. This is gonna... <laughs> Why am I so emotional about this? Um... <sighs> I know, I'm probably like a midi teen, but I'm gonna try and be pleasant. Good morning, Elizabeth. She ignored that, crossing her arms over her chest with a disgruntled expression. Clearly, she hadn't come in just to see you. Your special boy is at the door, like he always is now. He brought some happy summer gift from Mr. Holden. Mom wants you to take it from him, say thanks or whatever. You did, uh, you did not like the way she called him your special boy. <laughs> it is a bit weird, bud. But you knew by now that she would, uh, by now that saying so wouldn't stop her. So come on, so come down already. Really? That's great, I'm coming. <laughs> Elizabeth said nothing else and left, having done what was instructed of her. Now alone, you focused on the mirror once again. Your reflection hardly even fit in the frame. You're very tall. <laughs> Your reflection went over the whole length of the mirror. You're pretty tall. Your reflection fit comfortably in the frame. Your average height. Um, I think I am slightly tall, but I'm gonna go. Hmm, I'm gonna go average height <laughs> because I like the height difference. Cove, yeah, that, that's what I mean. Cove was really tall, Derek was kind of short, and you were pretty much the exact uh, height that someone would expect for a 13 year old. You liked your height, yeah. It suited you well, in your mind. When you put the finishing touches on your outfit while ruminating on the situation, careless as they had been, Elizabeth's word piqued your curiosity. You planned on going over to see what Cove was up to today, so this worked in your favour. It was when you spotted your reflection that you realised you were smiling wide. You were looking forward to seeing him. You left your room, taking an easy time down the stairs. Step two, second chance. I'm so excited. You spotted mum first, reclining on the couch. I want to see if, if she's changed. She held a magazine in her hands, which she was perusing through. Morning, mum. She looked up at you, your greeting, a smile instantly appearing on her face. <gasps> ah, so sweet, so cute. Oh, I love, I love the bun. Oh, damn. Good morning, Patch. Thank you for coming down. Uh, Mars at the door with Cove. He can't stay over today, unfortunately. Why don't you go and thank him before he leaves? You nodded and made your way to the front of the house. Just as she said, Ma was there making conversation. I want to see her purple hair. Oh, well, it might not be purple. It's going to be dyed, but I'm... Oh. She must have heard you because she looked over her shoulder. <gasps> yes! I love it. I love it. I love it. Look who finally made it. Morning, sleepyhead. Ma reached forward and you knew she was about to pat you on the head. She was taller than average, so you, you, so you were little in her eyes, despite being a typical size for your own age. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. It's fine. I want to have a good relationship with my parents. That type of small affectionate exchange was nice. She placed the whole of her hand on the top of your head for a second before lifting it back up. Ah, you're the last one down today. You know that. Life isn't a race. Morning. I was going to stay in longer, so you're welcome. Sorry about the wait. Ah, uh, what did we get? Um, 
Sorry about the wait. Oh, there's no need for that. What matters is that you're here now. With a small laugh, Ma stepped aside. Oh my god, I can't wait to see Cove. I mean, I know we've kind of already seen him, but still. Cove was just as you remembered, exactly how you came to know him to be. <gasps> ah! Oh my gosh! What a cutie! <laughs> He's so stupid. Oh, he's blushing so hard. And he brought us his... Okay. It, it, like, clearly like a plant. But the flowers look like cookies. Is it like a cookie? Plant. Uh, but he's blushing. Oh, the hair is so nice. <laughs> I love this game. I know. Oh, man. I just... He leaned uncomfortably to the side in your doorway. Uh, as his bushy hair covered part of his face. His features were pinched in embarrassment and he shifted from one foot to another. He was holding what must be the much talked about gift. At first glance, you figured it would be a, it must be a bouquet of flowers. Then you gave it a real look. No, instead it was carefully cut fruit. Yeah, it looks edible. It made a lot of sense that it was actually from Cove's dad. You had to suppress a laugh at, his, at this showing. You couldn't imagine many folks buying that sort of thing for their own personal enjoyment. That kind of arrangement was built for the presentation, likely to impress whoever was inevit inevitably going to receive it. It seemed no matter how long he lived here, Mr. Holden would keep going out of his way to be neighbourly, and Cove would always be roped into participating. At the sight of you, Cove smiled, but there was some nervousness to it. Hey. <gasps> I, like, got excited at my own voice saying his line. <laughs> God, I'm such a dork. You smiled back. You couldn't help thinking to when you first met Cove and how you became such good friends. Lately, though, you were starting to have different feelings for him. Hey, it's nice to see you. This, I feel like this step is probably going to take us a little bit longer than the last one, just considering how much I'm, like, getting excited about this relationship. Yeah, you too. His grip on the base of the gift tightened, and your heartbeat sped up. Even if neither of you had spoken about it, both of you were aware something new was growing in your relationship. Oh, that's, I'm glad, I'm glad we're acknowledging that it's like a mutual thing. It was already shaking, shaping up to be another long summer. The best part was that the two of you had plenty of time to spend together and explore what was developing. Oh. His awkwardness over the task started to creep back in, so Cove nudged the gift closer to you. He was ready to be relieved of it. Your hands brushed over his just slight when you, slightly when you took hold of the base. He flinched enough for you to know with certainty that he noticed it happen. You couldn't help but smile to yourself. And with that, the gift was accepted. Well, that's everything. Though he said that, he made no move to go. You could tell he was reluctant to. Game, don't do this to me. I can't make this decision. Because of course I want to say thank you, but... You are too cute sometimes. Look... I feel like, though it can come across as flirty, in certain situations it's almost like a friendship kind of flirty, like pretend, and that's kind of what this is, the vibe this is giving me. So I think I'm going to say thank you emphatically. There's an exclamation mark there. It's emphatic. Thank you. Could you tell your dad we love the gift? Yeah. <laughs> I need to calm down. Mr. Holden's behavior really was different from any neighbor you'd ever had, though after five years you were used to his antics, and you'd since made up your mind on what your opinion was. He was nice, he was sort of funny, he was pretty weird, you didn't like him, he was great, he was great, and kind of handsome to boot. <laughs> we're not turning this into a Stacy's mum situation, he is not handsome, disgusting. Oh, I want to see what he looks like now. He was nice, I think, he look, he is nice, he's really trying. He was nice. You knew he wasn't completely perfect, but he always seemed to try so hard for the sake of others. Your thoughts were quickly interrupted by a shout. Uh, there you are. <laughs> I don't, what voice do I give this? You shared a confused look with Cove as one, both of you, as one, both of you stepped through the open door onto the neighborhood street. 
Oh, it's Derek. Oh, I get to get to pick a voice for Derek now. Okay. This will be interesting. It didn't take long. Please don't put me in a love triangle. Please. Love. I don't like to be hypercritical, but love triangles do make me feel sick. <laughs> Not to mention most of media does them wrong. If we're talking about an actual love triangle, there needs to be something gay in there. Otherwise, it's just a love angle. Okay. Don't get me talking. Go, don't get me started on this. It didn't take long to locate the source of the noise. You spotted Derek just a few yards down the road. He ran up to you. What does he look like? I'm so excited. Um, I'm, look, I want another friend. That's okay. I'm happy. He can be a friend. Derek was certainly a welcome guest in your neighborhood. It was a pleasant surprise whenever he showed up. Oh. <gasps> uh? What a little cutie. After stopping a couple of steps away, Derek hunched over to catch his breath. When he looked up with a wide grin, your pretty eyes. Hey. Aw, okay. Hey, guy and pal. Thanks, bud. Very gender neutral of you. Okay, what voice do we give De Derek? His voice is kind of like, hey, hey, guy and pal. A little bit airy. Let's let's try for something like that. <gasps> He's tiny. Ah! I was just at your house, Cove, but no one was there. I uh, should have figured you'd be at Patch's place. Do you ever spend time in your own home, or are you always just there? Derek laughed at his own joke. He either didn't notice that it embarrassed Cove, or the embarrassment was that he is, act or it was the embarrassment was what he was actually laughing at. Derek turned to you. He was going to say more when his eyes widened and he gasped. What's that? You followed his gaze, unsure, then realized what he meant. You were still holding Mr. Holton's gift. This? It's kind of like a bouquet of flowers, but made out of fruit. Nice. Nice. Can I have some? I feel like Cove could potentially be upset if I share it right now. I'm going to say maybe later. Derek grew more excited by your words, bouncing on the balls of his feet. Awesome. Then he nodded his head as if to clear it. Anyway, uh, that's right. I came here because I needed to say something big. He paused, possibly for effect. There's some other kid here in Sunset. Oh, there's some other kid here in Sunset Bird. Cove was surprised as you. Good God. Cove was as surprised as you were by the news. Such a reaction made sense. Uh, such a reaction made sense. No one around your age had moved here since Cove did five years ago. I have a feeling. I have a feeling. Were they uh, with their family? Maybe they were cutting. They were cutting through. Nah, -uh. new kid. New kid was all by himself, just walking. Did you talk to him? Nope. <laughs> nope. I I came to report the sighting right away. The kid had green hair, glasses, was pretty small, and seemed really upset about something. I hope he didn't leave. You blinked. Slowly, you looked over to your longtime neighbor. You mean you? But with glasses. That sounds a lot like you, Cove, when you first got here anyway. Do you have a sibling? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess that was me back then. Derek snickered good-naturedly. <laughs> I can see that really well, now that you say so. But, uh, what do you say? Let's go find Cove's lookalike. We should all meet him. Sure, sure uh, I'll do it. Oh my god, I'm getting the voices mixed up. There are too many guys. <laughs> there are two. <laughs> sure, I want to see who this person is. Derek grins, then he pointed down the street the way he came. Maybe I need to change up Derek's voice. He, okay, you're right. I, I'm definitely making I'm definitely making his voice too airy. He's clearly a, a hyper ball of energy. Derek grinned, then he pointed in the street the way he came. Last time I saw him, uh, the mystery visitor was going this direction. That sound, that feels a bit better. <laughs> More whiny. <laughs> Nothing else needed to be said. The three of you were off, with Derek leading the way. Derek brought you to the beach, and as a trio, you made your way down the shore to the old playground. You walked the unfamiliar path in a comfortable silence. When you were almost there, you spotted the kid in question. His bright colours almost shone like a beacon beneath the rays of the sun. He scuffled around, picking up the sand as he paced. It was true, he certainly seemed upset, but you didn't think he was sad like you had originally pictured. No, with his erratic movement, movements and scratched up expression, he came off angry. 
You start to have doubts about this expedition. Maybe it'd be better if you left him alone and let him sort himself out. You shared a look with Cove, who was equal equally reluctant to start up a conversation. Derek didn't feel the same. He waved excitedly. Uh, he waved wildly, calling out to the boy. Hey, guy! Over there! Oh! You do not look friendly. But... My theory could potentially still be holding up. The kid whipped around, an impressive scowl carving deeper onto his face. His eyes were tired, but a strong, hostile energy radiated from him. Oh. What? What is it? What do you want? The sharp tone made Derek flinch. He shifted on his feet. Uh, what's your name? Oh, it's not Shiloh, dang it. <laughs> yeah, Shiloh would have had more freckles than that. Jeremy has awful hair and seems like an asshole. Jeremy, was that it? No. no, I'm Derek. That's Patch and Cove. We were just walking around and saw you. We wanted to say hi. There, are, there aren't a lot of kids our age in the neighborhood. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's cool to see someone else here. Strangely, Jeremy grew furious by your response. If steam could erupt from a person's ears, it would have happened then. They did bring me somewhere stupid. Of course, I knew it. Cove is just beautiful compared to these other... <laughs> See, that, that boy does not look 13. But, okay. What? My parents. My parents. They're the ones who brought me. I didn't walk to this town. Can you not figure that out on your own? Right, my dad brings me to Sunset Bird too, when he has to come for work and all that stuff. It's not bad. That earned him a glare from Jeremy. Derek winced beneath it, glancing away. It was a struggle to remain friendly with this Jeremy guy. I mean, I wouldn't want to come here for a real vacation, probably, either. <laughs> That's an understatement. This doesn't count as a vacation. It's a waste of time. A chore. My parents' family is nearby, and we just had to come and see them. Ugh. Um, uh, if they're your parents' family, doesn't that make them your family too? I guess. I guess. <laughs> That's a pretty good reason to come by. Did you want to go somewhere else? No. Jeremy crossed his arms with a huff. He turned away. They should have gone by themselves. Since they cared so much and left me home, but I'm not allowed to be by myself. <sighs> I do not like this guy. It makes no sense. They're the ones who don't know how to do anything, and I'm the kid? Um, hmm. <laughs> Who peed in your cereal this morning? <laughs> If I play through this and play the asshole route, which I will, whether or not it's recorded, I probably will. Um, I'm gonna try me nice. Sorry, it must suck to be forced to do something you don't want. As if that does anything. You turn to Cove, lowering your voice. The two of you aren't that similar after all. Jerry must must have had good hearing though because he caught the private exchange and scoffed. It is bizarre that you two have very similarly colored hair. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, of course we're not similar. My eyebrows aren't stupid. His eyebrows are beautiful. Shut up, Jeremy. Cove's cheeks flushed crimson at the insult. He couldn't be sure if it was out of embarrassment or anger. Maybe both. Come on. Yeah, right. Thank you. How can you say that when you've got a bowl cut? They're cool. Cove's... No way, you can't say that. His eyebrows are cool. Cove smiled weakly. Now I know why you thought we had anything in common. You must be blind. I lunged towards him. I beat the absolute crap out of him. Um, hmm. See, I feel like grinning, but you know what, I'm just gonna do it. You grinned at all of this. He wasn't the nicest kid you ever met, but he certainly wasn't the dullest. You, reje you, 
He rejected your amusement by grimacing even harder. Wow, what's wrong with you? Instead of taking offence, Jeremy only parroted Derek's words in a nasally voice. Wow, wow, what's wrong with you? Look, bud, if you keep being an asshole, I'm going to give you an asshole voice. I'll give you my nasty goblin voice. I have that power. This is dumb. Nope, you left. Just in time. Good. Coward. Run away. Jeremy stuck out his tongue and skulked away, throwing more sand everywhere as he went. You watched him go, hunched over, until he became a speck in your vision. What a douchebag. Silence. Like... For sure, I get he's upset. He's being forced to do something he doesn't really like. But that is no excuse to take it out on other people and be a huge dick. You can still be nice to people. Silence reigned in his wake. The three We were trying to be friends with that guy and he just kept being rude. And I'm not tolerating none of that, so... The three of you tried to process what just happened. I can't believe it. What a mean kid. Derek wasn't kidding, and by the sound of those earlier complaints, the new boy Jeremy was going to be in the area for at least a little while uh, this summer. Derek sighed in dismay, plopping onto the ground. You followed, and Cove did too shortly after. There wasn't much else to do. This sucks. This sucks. I was hoping we could meet someone fun. Hang out, maybe. He shook his head. After a moment, he slowly turned to you with a hopeful expression. But, you know what would really improve this day? What? <laughs> he didn't respond. Instead, he used a hand to point right at the few fruit arrangement you were still holding. You'd completely forgotten about it during the mini drama that unfolded. You hadn't gotten you'd gotten used to the weight. Glancing over to Cove, he noticed he was eyeing the fruit. Ah, uh, he must want some too. I mean, why not? Like, it was a gift to me, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it'll be worth it. Yeah, let's eat it. Derek perked up immediately at your words. He reached out for a skewer, hesitating slightly once he was inches away. Are you sure? No, not now. Okay, well, no, apparently, yes, I am. <laughs> you nodded with an eager grin. He plucked out a prime row of fruits. Co grabbed one for himself after him. Only you were without a skewer of your own. Oh my gosh. A strawberry, obviously. The strawberry was a bright, was a bright red and beckoning you. It was the obvious first choice. Yeah, obvious. Derek ate a pineapple skewer enthusiastically, finishing it within moments. Mmm, this is amazing. Cove continued munching on his, making a small noise with his mouth full. Hey, you two remember the land before time? That fruit thing makes me think of it. The dinosaurs all liked the leaves that were shaped like stars. <laughs> Tree stars. Yeah, chomping leaves looked so delicious when they did it. And there was that scene with the pri with the pretty trees and all the dinosaurs came in and picked ev everything off of them till there was nothing. That's us right now. Awesome. I love that movie. I've never seen it. I didn't like that one. That movie's for kids. Eating leaves looks good. Should I worry about you? Do you think this uh, do you think things taste better when they're shaped like stars? I mean, I mean pasta tastes better when it's shaped like dinosaurs. I had dinosaur pasta like two nights ago and it was the best. Didn't even have any cheese to put on it and it was still great. Um, I love that movie. Me too. The three of you continued like this for the next few minutes. Eventually, the display was barren. Uh, it looked weird with, when devoid of fruit. Whoop. <laughs> um, it did make me feel better. Derek was right. It was so good you were already brightening up from the earlier drama. Hey, Patch? Yeah? The two, of your, the two of you met eyes casually. Thank you for what you said back there. It's... It's... It's nice not everyone uh, thinks like that guy. Oh, it's okay. He was just being a jerk. Derek chimed in strongly. Don't listen to it, Cove. He's the problem. People shouldn't say those kinds of things. Yeah. Derek then leaned back on his arms. He contemplated the sky with a content sigh. So, are you both ready for summer break? Um, yeah, I think so, definitely. I'm always ready for holidays. It, it, like, I'm not sure how American, like, summer holidays works in America. Is it like that you literally get the whole season of summer off? 
I guess that makes sense by the name. But wait, so do you have like like a full three months off and then you're at school the rest, like the whole time? That sucks. Um, Cause I live in Australia and our deal is that we have it in four terms uh, and there's breaks between each term, um, which feels like much better pacing. Um, <laughs> Uh, so summer really throws me for a loop but you know maybe I've just got it completely backwards uh, cool on you I wish I could say the same it feels like there's a lot to plan for and what about you Kof are you ready mm, I think that depends before you could say anything else the light atmosphere was shattered hey. oh my god <sighs> Elizabeth look when we started this journey I thought, hey, I'm gonna like this character. She's got a really nice design, super, super cute. I love her dress, I love her hair, it's great. But you have turned out to be a bit of a dingus. And so far in this chapter, you're not helping your case. So I would tread carefully, bud. Hey, Pat, oh, no, whoa, that's not the right voice. Hey, Patch. You glanced over your shoulder to see your sister. She strode closer and closer, appearing none too pleased. I've been looking all over for you. Ma said you and Cove ran off with the thing Mr. Holton brought for us. Whoops. She led over... Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, just don't drop the accent. She led over you with folded arms. So, where is it? Uh, well, uh, it's gone. What do you mean, gone? You moved over to the side to face her completely. She zeroed in on the bouquet in your hands, which was now populated exclusively with skewers, dripping in juice and tiny flakes of leftover fruit pieces. Her mouth dropped open and the tone of her voice rose. What? Seriously, Patch? What were you thinking? It was supposed to be for all of us at home. She glanced at Cove, who sat beside you and continued mockingly. Even if you are the most important person in the household to the delivery boy, this was up to his dad. It seemed everybody was in the mood to tease you and Cove today. Within, moment, Cove, within moments, Cove's cheeks flushed red. He picked, he picked at the hem of his shirt, suddenly finding it very interesting. He was always nervous when Elizabeth would strike at your relationship. Hmm. You know what? I'm just going to say sorry. And she's right. Sorry, Elizabeth. Elizabeth narrowed her eyes, not at all pl pl placated. Uh, oh no. I think I hear the mead kid coming back. We better get out of here. Elizabeth blinked, confused, and looked around. Uh, what, kid? I don't see anyone. Derek didn't bother explaining. He just launched to his feet and ran off. Cove hopped up too, gladly taking the opportunity to exit the situation. He followed after Derek, but he sent a look to you over, uh, from over his shoulder. You turned to watch Elizabeth. She stared back, brow raised. I'll... S I'll stay. You didn't make a break for it. Instead, you carefully got out from the sand bouquet, still in hand. Once you straightened up, Elizabeth smiled affectionately over at you. Oh. <laughs> that, that change in mood, that's really, okay, that's sweet. Come on, fugitive. You nodded, then gazed at the empty bouquet. How would you explain what happened? You know, you could tell them that those boys ate it all. They bailed, so they don't get to tell the story. Mums would never need to find out. Are you serious? She bumped your shoulder, winking cheekily. <laughs> what else is family for? Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're actually nice. Okay, that's okay. I, I appreciate. Okay, okay, thank you. You laughed together, making your way home side by side. I love, I love a good, a good sibling relationship. Ah, uh, friendship between siblings. It's so good. <laughs> Later that night, you found yourself seated near the kitchen counter. When you and Elizabeth had returned earlier with the empty bouquet, Mum was bummed she didn't get anything. Ma consoled her with a promise to make her a fruit flower of her own later. Elizabeth said nothing about how it came to be empty and the event was dropped without question. You think they were just happy you and your sister seemed to be in good moods? That was a while ago now. Oh no. Your fingers drummed on the surface as you waited, your gaze trained on the phone. You were waiting on a call tonight, specifically from your c cousin, uh, Leandra. You didn't want to miss, miss it accidentally. Your uncle, aunt and Lee used to live many hours away. Your family, uh, 
used to live yeah you used to live many hours away your families only saw each other a few min times a year for big occasions a while back though they'd moved and were closer to you than ever before and now you hung out regularly with school being out you were positive she's gonna want to come over a lot the two of you were the same age and got along well she used to be really fond of lizzie elizabeth too um, but now that your sister had become allergic to interacting with her own family, it tended to just be you and Lee who spent time together. Um. Hmm. I think I've got friends who are girls. Yeah. Even though you weren't a girl, you befriended them pretty well. Thank you. I appreciate the, no the commitment to the non-binary choices that I have made. You also had a lot of non-girlfriends. Yeah, I... Yeah, sure. What kind of gender someone was didn't seem to make any difference in who you got along with. Yeah. Then the shrill ringtone and announced, uh, announced an incoming call. You jumped before grabbing the receiver and pressing it to your ear. Um... Yeah, I always... I like to answer the phone formally. You were greeted by a distorted high-pitched giggle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why do you sound so weird? M Mom answers the phone like that sometimes. It's supposed to be polite. You should go with hi. That was something a robot would say. There was static on the end, as if Lee was shifting wherever she was. So, can you believe school's actually over? I thought it'd never be done. Now we don't have to do any of that boring stuff, and we get to hang out whenever we want. Speaking of hanging out... Uh, Lee, can you wait a second? Let me just head to my room. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. You got up from your seat at the counter. Luckily, the phone was wireless, so you didn't have to worry about any cords tying you down. Your mom's had a rule about not moving the phone unless a call was in progress, which is why you'd been sat by its cradle waiting for Lee to call. Um... What do I think of that? Because you do still get to have the privacy of taking it to your room. I suppose... You know what, I'm going to say it makes... Sure, I don't feel too iffy about it at the moment. It was nice to keep everything in its proper place. Yeah, that way the phone doesn't get lost and stuff, sure. But now the lead called, it was okay for you to go upstairs to your bedroom and talk to her. See, they still understand the privacy of it, that's nice. You made your way up the stairs, smiling. After you had arrived, you shut the bedroom door firmly behind you. You took a seat on your bed. Alright, I'm here. Cool! Hey, did you know the girl that down the street from me has her own phone now? A cell phone! She doesn't have to wait for someone else to stop using it or anything. <laughs> wow, really? <laughs> maybe, I don't know what time period this is set in now. Maybe, maybe, maybe just, just, maybe it's just small town things. I don't know. You thought of someone having a phone that was their own seemed unbelievable to you. To be fair, I didn't actually... I didn't have my own phone till I was, I think, 14. And then I didn't actually properly use it until I was like 15 when I upgraded it to a smartphone. So I guess that's fair. The thought of you having... Uh, bleh, I've already said that. Right? I wish I had one too. My parents said I couldn't get my own phone until I'm more grown up. I wish they'd change their mind. We could all... Uh, we could call each other every single day and no one would be able to stop us. How great would that be? Uh, that'd be really great. We could even stay up late. Uh, we could even stay up late talking about whatever we want. Lee sighed thoughtfully into the receiver. At least they could. At least they said I could have it someday. <laughs> I can't wait. She sighed dramatically. <sighs> I bet I'm not gonna get one until I'm all the way in college. Squeezing the phone between your shoulder and ear, you puffed your pillows and made yourself more comfy. It was strange to think of a time when normal school would be over and you'd have to choose whether or not to go to college. School was such a big part of your life now. Okay. Now, in, in primary school, I like didn't try very much and got straight A's. I did like really well in primary school. And then I moved to high school and because all I had known is not trying very hard, I didn't do great. <laughs> um. Hmm. <laughs> um. I think I tried hard, but studying didn't come easy to me. I feel like that's reasonably accurate of me. I did try hard. I just didn't know how to do it. 
<laughs> you knew it was important and you wanted to do well. Frustratingly, even your best didn't seem to quite ever be good enough. You didn't know how it could be harder. You felt a lot of pressure to get higher grades than you did last year. Oh, oh yes, I know. Yeah, I know that feeling. You hoped to do just as well this year, but it wouldn't be a big deal if they dropped some. You're confident your grades would remain great. You'd know. Yeah, first one, I guess. Your future depends. Oh. Yeah. You tried to sound engaged, but your mind had decided to go back to school despite the season. Lee knew you too well to be fooled. He sounds so spacey. What's up? Just thinking about school. Lee groaned. Uh, are you thinking about how we don't have to think about it? Because it's summer. That's what I'm doing. I am not looking forward to going back. The more, Let's make a petition for more vacation time. Yeah. yeah, everyone in class would sign it. Maybe some of the teachers too. Though I guess school isn't all the way bad. You can do some good things there. You can just do more. Uh, you can just do more when school's out. Learning new things. Yeah, learning new things can be cool. Mm, you know what? I do enjoy learning new things. <laughs> I think in, I think humans naturally enjoy learning things. It's just about getting it in the right environment. And school is often not the right environment. I just wish er wish everyone did okay with how they taught th things, not just some people. Yep. Yeah. Me too. Gym is pretty great though. I don't... I don't... I don't... Like PE. <laughs> I don't like PE. I didn't like it. It like... I felt sick before PE constantly because I was so nervous about it. Um... Uh, I think it's a good way to hang out with, with other people. If I didn't go to school, I'd never meet anyone new. No one really comes here. Uh-huh. The cafeteria lunches at my school could be better than they had any right to be. I don't know why that sentence is throwing it off, but that's... So I'm just going to say that was all. And that's pretty much everything that's good about school. <laughs> okay, point taken. Now, I decree the topic of school is officially closed. We have to talk about this summer first before we start plotting the rest of our lives. We've got some plans already. Oh, tell me. I'm going to visit my cousins. You chuckled, of course. What's something you want to do? The first thing that comes to your head. I want to spend time with people. I got some new art supplies. Reading, I'm going to catch up on movies and TVs. Probably spend some time on the beach. Don't want to do anything at all. It's vacation. I think I've got new art supplies. Yeah. I can't wait to try them out. I can't wait to see what you make. You leaned back in your bed, settling in as you continued chatting with your friend. Even though it hadn't been that long since you saw her and you'd be seeing her soon, you found plenty to talk about. For one day, for one, the events of the day, you sat up straighter. I was with Cove and Derek today, we met this new kid. Like, uh, at your neighbourhood? Mm-hmm. His parents were visiting, so it sounds like he'll be around for a little while. I don't know for how long. What was he like? Um... I don't think he was necessarily creepy. He for sure was mean. No, he was mean. He was mean. He was mean. He kept snapping when we were all trying to do what, when all we were trying to do was talk to him. He just kept being rude to everyone, but especially Cove. It was awful. Mm, I don't think I want to meet him. You want a boy to stay away before even meeting him? That's an unexpected twist. Your cousin was pretty popular with the boys who knew her. She seemed happy enough to have them around until they started to annoy her. Hey, who are you? Go who are you to talk? You practically give all your attention to the boys, or maybe just one boy. I like. I I see how much you like Cove. Hey, it is good to be uh, to have a healthy relationship where I can talk about my feelings with someone else. And if that's my friend, that's cool. I'm gonna tell her. You got me. Yeah, it's a special case. I don't give him all my attention. You weren't. I'm gonna say you got me. Yu Li laughed at your affirmation, deeply amused. Even though she couldn't see, you shook your head at her, grinning to yourself. There was a stomping noise approaching your room, heralding the arrival of your irritated older sister. She flung the door open, a frown etched on her face. The little adventure from earlier hadn't gotten you any good in ha goodwill this time, it seemed. How long are you going to hog the phone? Glancing at your watch, you realised your, that your quick Quick call had gone on much longer than anticipated. Elizabeth held out her hand, the other one longed, lodged on her hip. She noticed the realisation on your face. Time's up! Um... 
you know what? Yeah, no, fair enough. She she's she's allowed to use the phone too. Gotta go. I'll see you soon, okay? Bye. Okay, see you. Tell Elizabeth and your mum they say hi too. You barely pressed the end call button when Elizabeth whisked the handset from your fingers and began dialing someone new as she strode out of the room. Your ma's voice called from downstairs. Hey, has anyone seen the phone? I'm using it. With that, she shut the door behind you. Silence was left in the wake. That was when that was one way to end your first day of summer break. Sometime later, it had gotten dark outside and you laid in your bed wide awake. It's really pretty at night. There's like more of a city outside than I remember there being. Am, am I just misremembering? Maybe I just didn't see it at night last time. Your window rattled all of a sudden, startling you badly. You flinched, staring over at it with furrowed brows. From your vantage point, you saw only the moon and open sky. You were... Curious, yeah. What had caused that noise? Cooking your head, you sat up and moved closer to the window. You wanted to get to the bottom of this. To your utter shock, your gaze was met by a pair of familiar ocean blue eyes. C Cove? You squinted. Yep, Cove was right outside your window. Your house was very angular and some parts stuck out further than others, so it theoretically wouldn't be hard to climb, climb around on. Still, just because somebody could didn't mean you expected it to ever happen. To his credit, Cove was doing fine. His feet were braced against a section of the wall that jutted out, his arms flexing with effort to keep him upright. He easily lifted a hand and waved at you from the other side of the glass. You hurriedly opened the window. Oh, he's in his pajamas! Cove climbed over the ledge, releasing a breath once he was safely inside. This is too cute! Midnight rendezvous! My widow heart. Hi, Patch. What are you doing? What's up, Romeo? <laughs> this is a surprise, but you're always welcome here. Is everything okay? What happened? You're lucky I didn't start screaming. Amazing, my dreams have come true. <sighs> okay. Am I playing this flirty? Is that the route we're going down now? Are we... <laughs> but a cute, wholesome flirty. I think that's the... What's up, Romeo? It's cute. I think I want to go. This is a surprise, but you're always welcome here. Oh. Oh, my heart. Thanks. I wanted to see you. <laughs> I figured this was the only way. If I rang the doorbell, I know your mums would have answered and they'd just make me go home. I didn't really want to explain why I was co coming over anyway. I I don't want to talk about it. Well, besides with you, I mean, that's why I did that. As unexpected as this was, you were touched. Co felt like he could tell you what was wrong. I, I, I might have tried calling or something, except my dad was on the phone. Cove suddenly looked very cross. Dad, he was talking to my mom. Still is, probably. You raised your eyebrows. Cove had eavesdropped on his parents' phone call conversation. Shouldn't have done... Look, sometimes you can't help but eavesdrop. I can't turn off my ears, you know? I don't think I'll comment. I'll just let him keep talking. There were other things to talk about, yeah. I, Are you going to stay with your mum for a while again? Every year, Cove was sent off to live with his mum for a few weeks. When it, ha ha when it happened, varied. Sometimes he would go during winter break, but usually he went during summer. Even though it was hard news when you found out he was leaving and you missed seeing him in those weeks, you understood. To your surprise, however, he shook his head. That's what I thought too, but no... That's not what they were saying. My dad asked my mum not to have me leave this year. He said she could come stay with us here. You waited for him to continue. He didn't. The conversation abruptly dropped off. Okay, but how do you feel about that? Because <sighs> that's important as to how I respond. You couldn't help but stare at Cove. There was a complicated mix of expressions on his face. What, what did your mum say? She told him she'd come. I know she's coming soon, before school ends. Oh. You uh, you had heard Cove talk about his mum a lot over the years. He'd tell you about past memories or what happened while he was visiting her. Still, it was one thing to hear about someone and another to actually meet them. Very soon, you're going to see Cove's mum in person. You were taken aback by the news, so you could only imagine how Cove felt. You looked over him. 
He was pacing across the room, his features pained with dread. Before they'd barely stay in the same room long enough to have lunch. Now we're going to all be together again, the three of us, after all this time, for a few, uh, just for a few weeks. I know I should probably be happy, they can talk to each other now, I'm, I'm still not. I'm just confused and freaked out, and now I just feel really bad for feeling this way. Patch, it's so... His fists tightened and his eyes became misty. I shouldn't keep getting like this. It's been a long time already, and I'm not a little kid. Though he wouldn't meet your eyes, you knew he was waiting for you to say something. Um... He knows I'm here for him. He just claim climbed up through my window. And there's nothing wrong with feeling bad. It is hard to deal with. Um. Uh. I, um. Yeah, no, I went through a very similar thing when my parents split up. It, um. Even, like, if the situation and works out for the better, it can still be really, really upsetting. Um. And figuring out how to handle that is really tough, especially when you're a kid and going through um, like a, a really important de developmental stage in your life. There's nothing wrong with feeling bad that is hard to deal with. Cove sniffled. You were afraid he might really start crying, but he didn't. Instead, he smiled. That's a cute but also really goofy face. <laughs> See, now I feel kind of better. Visiting like this wasn't a bad idea. A momentary silence fell over the two of you. You marveled at how the day started. You had woken up eager for summer vacation, but now things seem so crazy. The mini debacle with Mr. Holden's gift, the newest addition to the neighborhood being so rude, and as if all of that wasn't enough, now Cove's mum would be living with Cove and his dad again. Your whole life was kind of like that, it seemed. Complicated and hard and different. Why couldn't things just get better with time? Patch? The sound of your name, said quietly, pulled you up from your thoughts. Cove gazed at you, concerned. Are you okay? <gasps> My heart. Uh, are you okay? I think I am okay. I'm with Cove. And I know things will be okay. Yeah. I'm okay. You knew some things were still good. Cove grinned reassuringly. It was small and delicate, but you knew it was genuine. Moonlight from outside cast shadows across his face and lit up his eyes. They seemed to sparkle with his smile. Just that one look brightened your mood somewhat. You know, I... I think I don't want to talk anymore about this. He looked away, his lips thinning into a line and rubbed at his arms. But I kind of don't want to go back home either. Could I stay a little longer, just doing something else? He appeared equal parts hopeful and vulnerable. How could you possibly turn him away? Of course, you can always stay here, Cove. You hurled his gaze, comf gaze confidently, hoping your words got across to him. Cove perked up at your response, a smile appearing in his face. He immediately took a seat on your bed, not afraid to get comfortable in your room. You felt a little better at the sight somehow. You still had a lot of worries, but you were glad he was here. And not just tonight. You were glad he came into your life in the first place. That was a change you'd never want to undo. It felt totally natural to let him into your little world. That initial friendship had deepened so much over these past years, and you were certain there was room to get even closer. You joined Cove on your bed, taking a seat across from him. He smiled at you again, but you could tell this time it was half-hearted. He was still easy to read. Though he didn't want to talk about his mum and dad, he must be thinking about what happened and what's about to happen. Oh... <sighs> You smiled at him gently, you put a hand on his shoulder, you patted his back, you hugged him, you took his hand in yours, you nudged him with your foot. I'm- I'm going to hold his hand! <gasps> okay, okay. You reached out and gently held his hand. It wasn't much, 
but she hoped the contact helped a little. Cove blinked, startled, before his expression softened into something more natural. The conversation was stilted and broken often by silence at first. Then both of you were able to get into your usual candor. As your secret hangout session stretched on, you thought that you truly wanted to keep having moments like this with him. You hoped a day would never come when life decided that the two of you would have to part ways, and you know Cove felt the same. You opened your eyes, groaning as they adjusted to the bright light that was streaming through your window and warming your peachy skin. With a loud yawn, you rolled away from the sunlight and blinked a couple of times, clearing the sleep from your eyes before realising with a start that it was actually morning. You couldn't remember even falling asleep. Cove had crept through your window during the night and the two of you spent time together trying not to wake your parents. You must have fallen asleep while you were hanging out, but couldn't put a finger on exactly when. You wondered how late Cove had stayed before heading home. You rubbed your face and yawned again, contemplating whether you should get out of bed and get ready for the day or stay snuggled up for a little while longer. Until your gaze landed on an instantly recognisable mop of pale green hair and you bolted upright and gasped in surprise. He never left. He was still there in the morning. Yep. Yes. I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> He had fallen asleep while sitting on the ground and precariously leaning his head on the side of your mattress. With your laugh, Cove's eyes snapped open and his head slipped from its source of support. He didn't stop going down until he smacked right into the floor with a crack. You claimed a hand over your mouth and looked down at him with wide eyes, curled up where he had landed rather ungracefully. Ow. <laughs> Are you okay? You winced at his tumble, hoping no one else in the house had heard either of your outbursts. Yeah, I'm alright. Cove rubbed at his forehead a little, and you weren't sure that was entirely true. If either of your moms found out Cove had slept here last night, the two of you would be in big trouble. Cove blinked at you a couple of times, his eyes growing in panic as some thought that, it only, that only he could hear settled in his mind. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh his voice just then was so cute. <laughs> Oh my god, I fell asleep. You weren't exactly sure what to do as you watched Cove pace your room, looking around frantically. Cove, stepped mid sto co <laughs> Cove stopped mid-step and, uh, and you wanted to ask what he had been searching for, but you guessed he wouldn't know the answer to that himself. Despite that, he hadn't calmed down completely. The atmosphere was still frazzled gonna be all right we're going to be in so much trouble just calm down settle down before mom hears you um, it's going to be all right you just need to leave before anyone notices you're here if they knew we would have heard about it already cove nodded his shoulders tense as he fixed you with a firm stare from his turquoise eyes letting out a heavy sigh he ran a hand through his hair in exasperation he couldn't look at you again as he spoke i'll see you later you were confused by how all of this had played out, but hoped that was true. Right. Bye, Cove. At that, you were suddenly wrapped up in a tense embrace. As panicked as he was, this seemed to be something he couldn't forget before leaving. Oh. Thanks again. You're a good friend, Patch. Uh, a, a really good friend. He firmly whispered the words into the top of your shoulder. It made you feel tingly. But you were let go of before you had the chance to respond, or even fully react. In a matter of seconds, he'd climbed over your bed and opened the window. A cool breeze rolled off the ocean, fluttering through Cove's hair and filling your room with its salty scent. Cove fearlessly stepped out onto the ledge. You, Good luck. Be super careful. You weren't sure if he heard you or not, but he kept going along, one foot in front of the other with increasing speed until his form disappeared out of sight. You stuck your head out the window as far as it could, as far as it could go to, to try keeping watch. He walked the full length of the ledge before jumping down to the top of the garage, then lowering himself onto the fence. From there, he finally dropped down to the ground. He threw a thumbs up at his successful climb. He ran off towards his house without stopping, disappearing behind the side of another building. You had to admit that you were pretty impressed at how doable he made that look. Cove always seemed to have a way of seeming so smooth without even meaning to. With a little sigh, you reclosed your window, deciding there was nothing more you could do. You hopped off your bed and got ready to head downstairs for the day. I'm 
make my bed. It was a habit of yours. You straightened up your sheets, smoothed over your comforter, and fluffed your pillows before stepping back and admiring your work. You took the stairs, slowly attempting to mask your face into a look of innocence. You were sure that someone would have come to your room if they had heard anything strange, but you couldn't be too careful. You had to play it cool. When you stepped into the living room, Elizabeth was there, was there, tapping her finger on the counter. Good morning, Elizabeth. She looked over as uh, she looked you over immediately, her eyes squinting at the greeting. Why? Why are you being so weird? You hadn't even done anything. Your big sister never missed a beat, unfortunately. You turned and offered a tight smile, and her lips pursed together even tighter. Patch. Um I try I'll shrug it off. I'm not. You spoke so nonchalantly you almost thought she believed you, but she knew better. Further suspicious squinting occurred as she waited for something, but ultimately she rolled her eyes and you weren't sure if you were in trouble or not. She didn't seem to care enough to dig any further. Whatever. And then she walked straight out the front door, letting it slam shut behind her, and you let out a brief sigh. Elizabeth went out most days to hang out with her friends from school around town. Today you were extra glad for it, though you were also grateful she hadn't left the house any sooner and risked running into Cove. It looked like you were getting away with that. Breakfast was eaten in peace and alone. Your mums were both out by the time you'd gotten up. They had left, uh, they had left you a serving of food from the breakfast they had made. Hash browns and omelette, fruit salad, and there were a few sausage links. Damn, what a fancy breakfast. Um. Um. Well, I, I personally don't eat meat or animal products. And so you might as well keep it consistent, I guess. Your parents still um, made most of the food choices in the house, but they've worked on accommodating you since you started talking about becoming vegan. You added some extra things, not from their breakfast, to make your meal too, but the parts you did uh, have were tasty. The, la the day lazily drifted by. You pulled open the fridge again, lingering in the frosty air for a moment or two before grabbing a bottle of ice cold water and taking a long drink. It was perfect. Balmy summer afternoon. It was a perfect balmy summer afternoon, and you decided to head outdoors and find something to do. You hadn't decided what that something was just yet, but you were sure, sure something would pop up to occupy your time. As you were heading out the front door, you paused for a moment. You hadn't seen Ko since he had left that morning, and you couldn't help but think about what had happened to him. Would it be bad to go to his house right now or to call to check to check in? You stepped out of your house, still stuck in an internal debate with yourself when a voice caught your attention. Hi, Hi Patch, who's, who's speaking? Confused, you looked over to see an unrecognizable woman was waving at you, a friendly smile plastered on her face. You racked your memory for where you might have seen her before, but nothing came to mind. Not from your school or from the country club your mums took you to. You had absolutely no idea who this woman was. The woman crossed the road towards you, and you're a little unsure whether you should stay put or go back to the house and lock the door. Is this going to be Cove's mum? Or, or is this going to be, um, uh, blah, 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 Jeremy's mum? Oh, well, let's just see. Uh, what kind of voice does she, does she have? Um, oops, I'm sorry. Was that presumptuous? I, I've heard about you, but I, I have no idea who I, but you have no idea who I am, do you? Yeah. Co's mom is very pretty. I love her hair. You shook your head and she removed her sunglasses to reveal sparkly ocean blue eyes. All of a sudden, she seemed a little more familiar. My, uh, I, I can't figure out her voice. What am I doing? Um, uh, my son lives here. My ex too. With a bent smile, she lifted a hand to point at the condo across the street from your own house. She was Cove's mum. <laughs> you didn't know, uh, you didn't know why you hadn't realized sooner now that you'd gotten a good look at her. She was super pretty. She is super pretty. And I'm gonna say that she's nice. <laughs> Once again, not doing not doing a Stacy's mum situation here. Her attitude was friendly, and it seemed like she was genuinely happy to meet you. No matter your thoughts on her, you still felt taken aback that she had appeared here so suddenly. Cove mentioned she was coming, but you hadn't gotten the impression it would be the very next day. She extended her hand again, this time for you to take 
and you studied the manicured fingers in front of her face and the assortment of bracelets that dangled from her wrist. Or should I give her kind of, I'm Kira, um, I'm Kira, uh, no wait, I'm Kira, priest, uh, you can call me Kira. I'll shake her hand. You reached out and took her hand and she shook yours firmly, grinning wide. I'm Patch, but you already know that. That I do. Cove's mentioned you before. It's so nice to officially meet you. Cove talked to you, talked to you about his mum. He hadn't mentioned how he said things to you uh, to you to about you to her. Um, nice to meet you too. She smiled at you fondly, her eyes crinkling at the corners. <gasps> the sound um, the sound of a door opening and closing caught your attentions, and when you turned toward the sound. Uh, to, towards the sound it was to find Cove exiting his house, his eyes skimming the ground. Considering how tall he had grown, you kind of figured his mum also would have been tall, but she was much more on the short side, for an adult anyway. Cove's height must have come from his father. Oh. There you are! I thought you were just going to keep me standing out here all day. You tried to catch Cove's eye as he walked towards you, but his gaze was firmly fixed on the sidewalk. When he finally crossed the road and looked up, he gave you a pitiful look. After the way he'd acted last night, you, you knew he must be feeling pretty mixed up about this. You tried to wordlessly express that you understood. Cove and I are heading into town to grab something to eat while, uh, while the snore is at work. Kira beamed at Cove and ruffled his hair, which only uh, seemed to upset him more. You assumed the snore uh, she was talking about was Mr. Holden. Hey, you should come with us, Patch. I'd love to get to know you better. Yeah, you should come. There was a pleading in his tone that you couldn't miss. Of course, we'll run it by your parents first, responsibility and all that. It'll give me an excuse to meet him, which I need to do at some point. It's important to be neighborly if I'm going to be roasting on the street for a bit for a time being. Any hoosies, let's go. <laughs> I don't know what this voice has become, but I love it. Kira walked ahead towards your house and she hung back with Cove, who crinkled his nose as he watched her. I'm sorry about her. I I really do want you to come. I don't want it to be just the two of us. Not right now. You leaned in closer and whispered while checking around for anyone who might hear. What happened? Did your dad know you were gone? Cove shook his head and sighed heavily. Dad was so confused on mum showing up that he didn't even notice. I thought when I heard them on the phone last night that it was something they were planning for the future. This morning Dad said it was supposed to be a surprise and I guess I was surprised. She's going to be here all summer. Oh. You were surprised to hear that too. Cove sighed again, even heavier. I'll go with you if you really want me to. He smiled, his shoulders relaxing a little in relief. Thanks, that'd be cool. Oh. The two of you headed over to where Ko's mum had just knocked on your front door and stood behind her. Mum answered the door after a minute, her eyebrows lifting in surprise at the group she found in her front in front of her. You realised that, like you, she would have no idea that it was Ko's mum who was hanging with you. Didn't- I'm sorry, didn't they leave before me? I'm confused. Anyway, it's fine. However, after blinking at the woman a couple times and looking between her and Cove, the realisation seemed to strike on her. Hello there, I'm, I'm Pamela. I see you've met my kid Patch, and I'm guessing you've already known Co for a while. Kira laughed, and you and Cove exchanged looks at your parents' weird sense of humor. I'm Kira Price, Cove's mom. It's so nice to meet you. A head of purple hair, uh, purple brown hair caught your eye as Ma popped up behind Mum, squeezing herself in beside her. We have company. I was wondering what all the commotion was. She grinned excitedly at Kira. The two of them introduced themselves and shook hands. Hi, Patch. Cove. Cove smiled at Ma shyly and she gestured a hand toward the living room. There's no use hanging around in the doorway. Why don't you come in? I'd love to, but I promised to take my son out to eat and I wouldn't want to hold you up with a surprise visit. Cove grimaced and held back a groan. He likely took offense at how she didn't want to put uh, to put them out with a surprise visit, but not him, apparently. Oh, I understand. You're welcome to stop by any time. I'll take you up on that offer whenever I can. Count on it. 
Would you mind if I, uh, would you mind too much if Patch went uh, uh, with Cove and I? My tree. Uh, we won't be driving. Just a quick walk down the road. Sure, uh, sounds nice. I hope you all have fun. You gave your mums a look and they smiled at you fondly. Um... Yeah, you're happy they were letting you go. That's nice. You could tell that Cove really needed the support and you were ready to be there for him. <laughs> Marvelous. Uh, just expect, expect us back in an hour or two. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Take care. Your parents waved goodbye to the three of you as you backed onto the, uh, backed up onto the street. There was the sound of the front door closing behind you. I'm pretty positive I saw some restaurants when I was in the taxi not too far from here. Yeah, yeah it's a tourist town, isn't it? There's lots of them around. Kira put her hands on her hips and smiled at her son. Well, you sound like the area expert. Do you have any recommendations for a place nearby? Not really. Kira pouted at him a little and turned to you instead. How about you, Patch? Want to point me in the right direction? Sure, I have a couple of favorites. You'd been to a lot of places in town, and there were a couple that stood out from all the rest. Uh, there's a Chinese restaurant that me and my family go to all the time. It's my mom's favorite. It's my mom's favorite. My... Okay, are you saying your mom, her favorite, or your mom's, their favorite? Yeah, but it, it, either way, there's a tropical themed. Uh, there's a tropical themed place that tries to be sort of fancy. Both sound like a treat. I'll give it to you to pick for us since Cove's going through a phase over there. Oh my god, I hate that. I hate that. I hate that. Like, like when, when. <laughs> Like when adults are just like, oh, they're going through a moozy phase and it's like, no, I'm actually just like depressed and you're not being very supportive of me. Can you, okay, like how adults, like just, ugh. oh, I don't like that. He huffed at her and turned his face away. He's just upset. It's not a phase. Don't be so dismissive of his emotions. God, that's a, that is a, apparently that's a real peeve of mine. <laughs> Um, um, Cove can con contribute. It's okay. Uh, it's okay, Cove. Tell us which one you, want, one you want more. He mumbled sulkily, willing to reject his mum, but not you. I, I, I like the tropical place more. That's what I would have gone for too. With two votes in favour of one restaurant, it seemed like it was settled. We can go there. <laughs> Thank you, Patch. Will you show us the way? You nodded, taking the lead of your little group as Cove and his mum followed behind you. Together, the three of you left the neighbourhood behind. The walk was about 15 minutes and along the way, Kira asked a lot of questions about the area. Cove was quiet most of the time, so you ended up answering her instead. Kira explained that she lived in a large city and she loved how peaceful and relaxing everything seemed in Sunset Bird. The restaurant was busy as usual, but luckily you were shown to a, uh, you were shown right to a small table. Kira lowered herself into the chair while Cove picked one diagonal to her, not facing her, or to, or to her side. It was awkward. Um, let's see, to start, uh, what would you all like to drink? I'll get um, an orange soda. Noted, a uh, patch? Ooh, ooh, mm. Juice! I like juice. <laughs> Which flavor? Apple, 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 apple. I like apple juice. Sure. Kira placed the order for your drinks, getting a black hot coffee for herself, and it didn't take long before they were brought to the table and set in front of you. You took a long sip of your drink as you looked around the restaurant. Your small group checked over the menus, deciding what to order. The last time you came here, the dish you ordered was amazing. You wanted to order something different this time. Kira and Cove didn't need an, any, uh, any encouragement for this. They were totally focused on the information in front of them. Soon the meals, too, were ordered and the menus taken away. You glanced at the table surface, waiting to figure out what to say. Cove awkwardly sunk back further into his seat and crossed his arms, all while blatantly avoiding eye contact. The side wall must be real interesting to him right now. His sour feelings today were un unignorable. Instead of asking more open questions he'd brush off, Kira had mercy on her son and instead put her focus towards you. 
I'm really giving you a different voice than this voice actress. I'm sorry, but, you know, I'm having fun with it. So, Patch, <laughs> what's, in, what's a few things that you're into? There's got to be something you do for fun, especially now that you're not buried in school assignments. Ooh, ooh, so many choices. Okay. I like to read. I like to watch something. Games are fun to play. Well, yes. I like to hang out with people. I like to go to the beach. I like sports, music, art. I write things, spend time studying. Pff, boring fashion. I'm really into Cove. <laughs> oh, I just want to play a gremlin run and just pick all of the wild options. Um, well, we've already said I'm into art. Um, I like games. Let's go with games. Games are fun to play. I like... Oh... So I can say I like games and oh nice okay like uh, uh sure let's say and I like to write yeah because that's me in real life baby <gasps> oh wonderful oh, Kira woman after my own heart oh no <laughs> a fellow writer oh writing is a great form of expression don't you think Kira sighed wistfully her eyes going soft um. I like, I like, I like to watch, uh, people, <laughs> um, I like movies, I guess, eh, I'm not a huge movie person myself, but we'll see. Shakira nodded her head, you guess she liked that too. Plays, I like plays. I do like plays, actually. Oh, why didn't I say that for the first time? I like plays, I do theatre, and I love musicals. That's very interesting. And uh, let's say art. I spend time on art. Ooh. Uh, I do more drawing. Actually, I do. I do very mixed media stuff, but I'll say drawing. I filled out a lot of sketchbooks. Um, I also do sculpting, I guess. We learned how to make clay sculptures at school, and I've loved doing it ever since. And oh my god, I'm picking more. Um. I like music. Are we just gonna keep going? Um, I listen. I listen to a lot of music. I play the ukulele, but I listen to a lot of music. An MP3 player. Okay, clearly this isn't modern day. Then I guess I have an MP3 player at home that uh, my mom helped me put some music on, and I've seen some concerts. <laughs> awesome. And I think that's it. Oh, okay, that's it. And just. Thanks, I'm happy to learn more about you. There's so much I hadn't heard. Grove leaves out the details. There's just little niggling bits of criticism in her language, which I'm not keen on. Uh, so what exactly did Cove say about me? <laughs> Kira laughed, holding a hand in front of her mouth. I can't tell you that. I didn't come all this way to embarrass my son. Too much. Yeah, cl clearly. Pfft. Kids are delicate at this age. Well, I'm glad you think you're aware of that. <laughs> She laughed again and you glanced at Cove to see his reaction. He cringed, looking very much like he would rather be anywhere but here. Hoping it would be he, hoping it would clear some of the tension in the air, you decided to ask Kira a few questions of your own. Yes, I want to know about you, ma'am. Cove hadn't told you too much about her, and you were curious to know more about this woman who was such a big part of his life. Uh, what exactly do you do for work? Oh, wonderful. I'm a travel writer for magazines and things. I keep people in the loop on what's worth seeing. It's so good. It's good work. Wow. Oh. What do you like to do? Spend time with my little boy, of course, and traveling. A real shock, huh? Where do you live normally? Nevada. Have you ever been there? No, I definitely haven't. It's a beautiful place. That's not no hate to Nevada. I just have never been to America. <laughs> It's a beautiful place. Check it out if you can. Yeah, that's it. I'm not I'm not going any further. That's fine. It didn't seem to bother her that the conversation dropped off. Cove sipped his soda angrily, slurping up the remaining drink with furrowed brows. He looked ready to run straight out of the restaurant. If you weren't sure uh, you weren't sure if coming along had ended up making the lunch better or worse. Mm, um I'll smile at him. Cove eventually noticed you watching him. It was subtle, but you swore you could see the hint of a smile tilting the corner of his lips. Oh, you two seem really cute together. 
Cove covered his face with his hands and leaned back in his seat. Ugh, oh, Mom, why would you say that? I gave him an American accent. Whoops. It's just so tough. There are so many characters. <laughs> I would love to say thanks we are cute, but it needs to be a mutual decision between me and Co when we are ready to accept that we are in a relationship. Because we all know it's going to happen. But it is between us, so I'm going to blush. Were the two of you really cute together? Your meals were delivered shortly after that and everything was so delicious. Even Cove enjoyed the food. All right, now that we're all full and content, can you explain please why you've had a bug up your butt all day? Okay. Okay, ma'am. Cove's face instantly returned to his scrunched form. Seriously, baby, what did mom do to make you this mad? I haven't seen me. I haven't. I haven't been around a. F I haven't even. Ah, I haven't even been away around a minute. Apparently, that's all. That's all. That's all you get. Sorry. He gripped the edge of the table, refusing to make eye contact. The words he spoke were barely audible over the din of the restaurant. You could have told me. She leaned forward to not miss anything else. Eyebrows raised. Told you what? He finally seemed to find his voice and spoke the thoughts that had been on his mind. That I wasn't going to visit you this year. That you were going to be coming instead. Didn't inf didn't you invite me? You wanted me here with you. Cove's eyes began to shake and his frustration ebbed. I, I, I don't... I do want you to be around, but... I didn't know it'd be like this. It's not the same, and nobody said anything. Hey, I think that's totally fair. I, um, I, like, personally really need to mentally prepare when I'm going to be hanging out with people so that, like, even if it sounds fun, often if someone invites me to something that evening, uh, like, without much forewarning, I just can't go along because I'm, like, not mentally ready for it. I know that sounds, that might sound really stupid to some people and other people it'll really resonate with, but for sure, like, even though he loves to hang out with her and see her, if he didn't know and he wasn't ready for that, he had expectations in his head and they weren't met and it can be just, it just can just make the situation really overwhelming, especially for this boy who clearly has anxiety. <laughs> I see. Her expression grew tense. She threaded her fingers together and placed her hands in front of her on the table. We've, um, oh, oh, really? We've both been gifted another Clifford surprise. Referring to that as a Clifford surprise almost caused both of you and Cove to crack a smile. You also had no idea his name wasn't just Cliff. Over five years, nobody had ever called him Clifford until now. She smoothed her hair out, not letting go of her stern look. The more things change, the more they stay the same. They let out identical sighs, but smiled weakly at one another afterwards. I can go home, Cove. We can still set up a normal trip to my place before the summer ends. Cove's lips tightly closed together. He seriously pondered the option. I... I think I, I do want you to stay. I, I miss it when you're not there. <laughs> oh, my heart! Me too, hon, me too. She reached across the gap, grabbed his face, and planted a kiss on his cheek. Cove, Cove tried to wiggle away. Mom, stop! Mom, stop! <laughs> I'm sorry, sweet young men need to be smooshed by their parents. If I don't, they'll take away my mom license. Oof. Kira was completely enthused by Cove's admission, though a tone of seriousness did return to her voice when the conversation continued. Do you want to talk about your dad too? No. No, apparently. He seemed very aggressive about that one. Cove had snapped the word immediately, but reeled his annoyance back in just as quickly. M maybe later, just not, not today. <laughs> I understand. We can shelve it. Thanks, Mum. Thank you for talking to me, little mister. Little mister? Hmm. She grinned affectionately at him before turning your way. And thank you, Patch. Huh? What did I do? It's easy to act like a baby with your mom. It's harder to keep that up with your neighbor watching everything. A 
Especially when you really care about what said neighbor thinks of you. She winked. Mom. <laughs> she ruffled his hair with her laugh. Oh, with a laugh, with her laugh. She laughed so hard that it ruffled his hair. When, um, then moved her hand down to tap the end of his nose. And that was how the issue was resolved, at least between Cove and his mom. Oh, that's good. I'm gl I'm really glad to see that whenever issues come up here, they always they like they they like always have a positive resolution. It's very calming to me. When the three of you left the restaurant and Kira had paid the bill, you walked back to your neighborhood slowly. You had eaten so much by that time, you were beginning to feel sleepy. It didn't help that the lunch had happened late and the sun was already beginning to descend from the sky. Oh, there he is! I love the new look, bud! Much more mature. The hair is beautiful. But eventually, you reached your street. Someone was there to greet your group upon arrival. Welcome back, family, in patch two! Oh, she does not seem happy. Cliff. Dad. The two walked past him into the condo without sparing another word. Despite the summer heat, their shoulders were cold. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. He rubbed the back of his neck with a crooked smile, but his eyes were soft as he looked on after them. <sighs> He's so much like his mom, don't you think? You gave a vague nod, not sure what he was expecting you to do. He nodded back, far more energetically. Okay, have a nice night, Patch. You too, Mr. Holden. With that, Cove's dad disappeared to join the others inside. It was your turn to go home now. Summer hadn't started off at all how you imagined it would have, though it turned out to set the tone well. Having Kira in the neighbourhood was a new experience for not only you and Co, but also your families, and a dull moment was rarely had. <gasps> and here we go! We're up to the moment section for step two. Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. That was so fun. I love all the updated character models. They're so cute. Why are the adults all so pretty? It's a struggle. Okay, so next time we're going to be moving on to probably wave and growing because I just like doing them in order. I know I don't have to, but I like it. Um, I um, I like that we're moving into this kind of the more mature section of the story. I was kind of struggling, I feel like, a little bit doing like reading some of the lines in the younger section just because I feel like I couldn't really connect very well with the tension that was going on and their problems just because they were so young. And I mean... Yeah, I'm that I'm doing. I actually just started a course on YA literature, and one of the big struggles in studying YA, like a young adult, is um, um, that because it, the target audience is like um, young people, like teenagers, but it's almost always written by adults. Actually, studying it is difficult because I mean, those the portrayal of those situations is never going to be accurate. So, even though I have been a child. I can't at my current moment completely relate to those childhood experiences because I'm not currently a child myself. But moving into this slightly more mature section, even though they are 13, it's a bit closer to my age and I can still relate to it a little bit better. And there are more um, more adult drama and uh, more intriguing tension going on. So I feel like I can get into the story reading a bit more. Um, uh forgive me for bouncing all over the place with the voices just because new people are being introduced all the time and people are growing up and i need to change them and there are so many characters and this is probably one of the first stories where i've actually actively had to do lots of different voices for it i love doing voices and stuff but i most of the time when i do it i'm not having to bounce back and forth between lots of different ones even though like i, I run D, D and stuff usually you're only talking to maybe two or three npcs at a time not like eight <laughs> so, i think i'll hopefully be settling into it more next time and i'm really really loving this this next section i'm like as we've been going on every single episode i've been enjoying more and more and this one was so much fun um i'm so excited to see our relationship with cove kind of uh flourishing and becoming really nice and this this little um crush i i uh, growing i i like to i'm really glad they're like making it obvious that he's he's feeling the same way as you um because i i don't think i could get in like uh, appreciate their relationship as being potentially romantic if they didn't indicate that 
I, I'm i personally uh, working on developing my own romance novel at the moment. So I've been doing a lot of research into how to effectively write romance. And yeah, that's one of the big points that I've come across, making it like kind of um, obvious that the relationship has potential is very important because people aren't just going to quote unquote ship it because it's been sat in front of them. It needs to have a chemistry and they need to care about each other and god i could talk for her about it i should <laughs> time to move on i need to go make my lunch because i'm hungry <laughs> i'll see you all next time i hope you've had fun thank you so much for hanging out with me i hope you're enjoying this this um this uh series let me know uh how you're liking it down in the comments below i'd love some interactivity <laughs> I love you guys so much. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.